Good morning, students, and welcome to Albano Farms. We are here in Stamford, New York, for your live virtual farm tour, a deep dive into what goes on here on the dairy that's uh, super sustainable, very environmentally friendly. We're going to talk a lot about cows. We're going to talk a lot about what cows eat, and we're going to talk about the land. Before we get started, though, Let's do a couple housekeeping items. Number one, I definitely wanna hear your questions. So feel free to put your questions in the question answer box. That's the best way to get your questions asked. I will relay them over to our farmer who you're gonna meet shortly. The next housekeeping item, if you're joining us on Facebook or YouTube, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can type some questions into our comment section. If you're joining us on YouTube, just enjoy the tour. There's going to be lots of great questions asked. I'm pretty sure your questions might get answered. We've got a lot to cover. The last thing I want to share with you is on this tour, you're going to see if you're joining us via Zoom, you're going to have some interactive questions come your way. So be paying attention to what we're saying because I'll help you answer those questions in a little bit. Now, if you're watching the recording of this later, you won't necessarily be able to answer our questions live, but we're going to give you time and make sure you see the answers. So definitely try out our questions, try your hand at them. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you guys to Farmer Chris. So Farmer Chris is the one who's going to be sharing all of the cool information about us. So Farmer Chris, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the farm? Hi, I'm Chris Albano. Um, we're a third generation farm. I'm 20 years old and uh, we milk cows here. Um, we milk about 350 dairy cows. Um, we milk them three times a day. Um, they lay on sand bedding, so they're comfortable. Um, they have food 24 seven, water. Um, they got fans above them, so they stay cool. Um, they're very comfortable. Um, wow, that is so cool. So you just gave us so much information. Um, we're super excited to see those cows behind you as well. Now, you said, how many cows do you guys milk? Uh, we milk 350 cows. Wow, that is a lot of cows. And now, obviously, Chris, I'm, I'm here on the farm with you too, but how far away are we right now from New York City? Um, we're about three hours from New York City, three and a half hours. Wow, so we are not that far away. That is really really cool and you, you were telling us a little bit about these cows behind you and how comfortable they are so it looks like we got some cows having some some snacks behind you are they are they eating is it breakfast time here on the farm what are they eating um yeah so it's pretty much breakfast time um the food got dropped at 4 a.m this morning um and then in about an hour they'll get more food just fresh um they're eating a mixture of corn grass and grain um, all the corn is grown here on the farm and, uh, we feed them corn year round. So we have a way of storing it so it doesn't go bad. Um, we could show you some corn over here if you want to take a look. Um, yeah. this is what the corn oh plant looks like when we, uh, before we harvest it. Um, you can see the ear of corn here with the kernels on it. Kind of looks like the corn that humans eat. And we chopped it in a bunch of small pieces. And then what it, the finished product looks like is this. Oh, uh, wow. It's chopped Very up cool. in a bunch of small pieces so the cows can eat it easier. And uh, then we store it so we have it all winter. Um, this is our main ingredient for the cow's food. Um, our second biggest ingredient is uh, grass. Um, so we also store it so it's not green like you know it. It's fermented. So it pretty much cooks throughout the winter. Um, this is our second big, biggest ingredient for the cows. And then most importantly, we have the grain. Um, this is our smallest ingredient, but it's the most important. It has minerals, um, everything the cows need to keep them healthy and uh, making sure they make plenty of healthy milk for us to drink. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Okay, so you just told us all those awesome ingredients, but how how much how many pounds of food does a cow eat in a day? I mean, I know how much I eat in a day. I can't even imagine how much a cow eats. Um, they eat about a hundred pounds of food a day. Um, Holy moly! And they drink they drink about a bathtub of water a day too. Each cow. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Now, okay, another question then. How 
big are those cows if they're eating 100 pounds of food a day? Um, the cows are about 1,200 pounds a piece. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Maybe, maybe we can see some on our cow cam there. Those are really, really cool. Uh, so all those ingredients that you just told us, how do you know how much of each to feed a cow? I mean, that looks a little complicated. So we have a uh, nutritionist come in every two weeks and um, they go through the barn, they look at the cows, they take samples of the feed, um, and then they put a list together of how much uh, ingredients we should give the cows, how much grain, how much corn, how much grass, um, depending on how much milk we're making, um, how heavy the cows are, if they're getting a little skinny, we'll add a little more. Um, and uh, then we weigh it all. So every morning we weigh how much feed goes into the mixer um, right to the pound. So it's very precise. Oh my gosh. So there is literally a profession where you just make cow diets. Yes. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. So um, now I know you guys here on this farm, Chris, are doing some really cool stuff with new technology and new information. And it's called precision <clears throat> feeding. Can you tell us a little bit about what precision feeding is for your cows? Yeah, so um, we, uh, we know how much we need to grow, how much uh, we weigh everything out, and uh, we uh, know pretty much exactly how much feed we need um, and how to save the environment while we're doing it. Um, we, okay, uh, so you guys are getting like really specific and dialed in, so there's basically as little waste as possible, right? Your cows don't yep. have leftovers. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No leftovers. Got it. So now when, when we're doing that, like you said, uh, you guys are growing a lot of your feed. So does that mean you're making really specific choices about what you grow to help with this precision feeding? Yeah. So we know um, we pick certain fields that we plant the corn um, and we always try and rotate them. So it's healthy for the soil. We're always putting back into the soil um, and we spread the cow's waste, the manure, on the fields um, and we take soil samples every four years and uh, that's so we know what fields need more nutrients um, to keep the crops growing good um, and make sure we're putting back into the soil. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I, I do have some questions. Do you think you can answer some questions for me? Yep. Okay, so we've had uh, some people who are watching our, our tour right now and they're wondering if caring for the cows in the winter is different than caring for the cows in the summer. And I'm going to, I'm going to add to that question, Chris. So maybe talk a little bit about, tell us about how you would feed a cow differently in the winter or the summer. So it's pretty much all the same. Um, in the winter, they might get a little bit more energy just because it's colder. Um, and that's all adjusted with our nutritionist. Um, but for the most part, the cows are on the same schedule. Um, Cows like consistency. They like the same thing every day. That's how they make the most production. Um, they like getting fed the same time every day, getting milk the same time every day. We um, like that. We like that. So now I'm, yeah. I'm here too with you on the farm, Chris, and I see these cows are in a very, in a beautiful barn, right? So I would maybe tell us a little bit about that, that they're protected in the winter or, or how, how the barn helps uh, keep, them, keep them comfortable through all the seasons. Um, so our cows stay in this barn year round um, just for the comfort of the cow. Um, so when it's really hot out here, we have fans in the barn that run on a thermostat. So if it starts getting too hot, um, the curtains, we have curtains on the outside of the barn. Those will roll up so we get fresh air movement. Um, and then the fans will kick on on their own. And uh, there's fans over top of the cows. Um, and they, they all lay in sand bedding. So it's pretty much like they're at the beach with a roof over them. Um, it's very cool, very comfortable. Um, and they have water right next to them. There's no cows that are far from water. They have water right next to where they lay. So they only have to walk like 20 feet to get the water at all times. Oh my gosh, that's great. And you were, you were explaining to us that feed got dropped this morning for breakfast, but these cows have access to food 24 seven. It's like a, like a Denny's buffet, right? <laughs> yep, 24 seven. We love that. So now we did have a couple other questions come in. Uh, some of our other uh, watchers were asking, what are the red markings that we see on some of your cows? If you want to explain to us what that paint is. So what that paint is, is uh, it's different groups. So we have three groups here on the farm of cows and um, the red paint can mean 
that they're pregnant and they're getting close to having a calf. So we put them in a different pen that is a little, it's a different diet um, for them making a calf. And uh, the blue Great. paint, we have blue and red. Um, the blue paint is cows that had a baby not too long ago um, and they're making the most production. Um, so they get okay. a higher so energy diet. Got it. So you're even adjusting these cows feed based on how much milk they're producing to best meet their needs. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's that's amazing. So we did have a couple other questions come in, one of which was, uh, how many times a day are your cows milked? So our cows are milked three times a day. Um, we start milking at 4 a.m. We're done milking by 8 in the morning. And then we start at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We're done by 4 in the afternoon. And then we start a clock again at 8 o'clock at night. And we're done about 10, 11 o'clock at night. Um, we do it. that because it's most comfortable for the cow. Um, if they're making high production, they got to milk a lot. So they're not mm -hmm. stressed out. That makes sense. So um, now that's how we get the most question. production out of them. We had another question come in. What are the tags in their ears for? Um, so the tags are so we know what cow we're looking at. Um, and we can also find them in the barn easier that way. So if we have a sick cow, we know what number she is. We can go find her. Um, well, then we write down if she's pregnant, we know what number she is. So we know who's pregnant and who's not. Okay, got it. So the, the, those ear tags are almost kind of like a driver's license, right? Like all the information's there and maybe even some of their doctors or, or medical files are there too. Yeah, it's pretty much like their name. That's how we know who they are. Got it. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So now I, I'm curious, if you know this, about how tall are these cows? We had uh, some of our, our classrooms wondering. They're seeing these cows, and I think they look pretty tall. <laughs> so the cows are about five feet tall. Um, they're all about as tall as a human. Some are a little shorter. Oh, very cool. Now, uh, last question, I think, before we give our, our students a chance to um, to work on some questions here is you've told us about the feed, you've told us about the cows and how they're comfortable, but in order for them to eat that much feed, I can imagine that, uh, they have to spend a lot of time eating and chewing. So how long, what, what do these cows spend during the day? How many hours are they spending, um, doing those sorts of activities, just eating and hanging out and laying down? Um, for about 10 hours a day, they're eating, laying down, relaxing. Got it. So they, they lead a pretty, uh, pretty relaxed schedule. Now we did have another student ask us, uh, you work so early and so late. Do you nap <laughs> during the day in between those milkings? Um, so we actually have two different shifts. We have, um, a morning shift that is a different set of employees that come in at four in the morning and they do afternoon. And then after they get the afternoon milking done, those guys will go home rest for the next day. And then we have another group of employees that come in at night and do the night milking. Oh, got it. So you definitely have some help here on the farm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So the last question before we, uh, like I said, give these students a chance at their hand at some questions is how old are the cows behind you? So how old are those cows when they start milking? So the cows are about two years old when they start milking. Um, that, they got to have their first calf to start milking. And uh, they all have calves at about two years old. Got it. Got it. Okay. So I think we're ready, Chris, to uh, have our students try some questions. And while they're working on those questions, maybe I'll have you uh, head over to check out our next area of the farm we're going to explore. What do you think? Sounds good. So we just... All right, students, for those of you on Zoom, you can do these questions on the matching. For those of you not on Zoom, that's okay. We want you to fill in the blanks. You should have heard most of this information in our previous section.
All right, Chris, while our students are finishing up those questions, we did have a question come in, which is, do you guys use any robots on the farm to do anything? Robots to milk, robots to clean manure, robots to feed? Um, so we do use robots for feeding our calves, and you'll see them in a little bit. Um, we just put them in last year, uh, so the calves can drink whatever they want, 24-7, free choice. They can go in whenever they feel. Um, and it's all free choice. We don't have to go in and feed them at a certain time. It's just whenever they please. Got it, got it. Okay, students, go ahead and wrap up your answers. And we'll go ahead and show you the answers to the questions. All right, hopefully you guys found your answers. So, time to rejoin Chris. Let's see, Farmer Chris, where are we now? Now we're in front of one of our pieces of equipment. Um, earlier, if you remember, I showed the corn plant and I was talking about how we cut it up into a bunch of small pieces and this is the machine we use to do that. Um, this machine here will chop about 30,000 pounds of corn in about four to five minutes. Um, Wait, 30,000 pounds. That's so much. That is a huge piece of equipment. Yes. So um, this also does our grass, too. This is what we harvest the grass with and cuts it into small pieces. Um, and then it'll put it in a truck and we'll haul it from the field back to the farm for the cows for the winter. Got it. Got it. So we had a, uh, we had a question come in that I think is, is perfect for this. Do you do all of this uh, crop work yourselves or do you hire specialists to do some of this crop work? So who's, who's the operator of this very big piece of equipment? Um, so me and my brother are the operators of this. We own this equipment um, and we do it all ourselves um, for the farm. Oh, wow. We that's don't... super cool. We did have a question too. How much, how much does one of those cost? So this machine here is about $800,000 to buy it new. Wow, holy bananas, that's a lot of money. Now, uh, I know you had told us a little bit before about how much the cows were eating. Now, how many acres uh, total are you guys working here or, or growing crops to feed your cows? Um, so we're doing about 2,500 acres. Um, it's two and a half central parks is what we're doing just for crops. Oh my gosh. Okay. So our students who are in New York city, two and a half, the size of central park is the land that it will take to grow enough food to feed these cows. That's pretty cool. Now, of course, I know you guys are, are growing crops and we had a question come in, which is what happens to all of the cow poop? What happens to all of the manure? So the manure, we store it um, into a certain time of year. We are in the New York City watershed. So pretty much New York City has a program that works with farmers. And they tell us when the best time is to uh, spread the manure on the fields, when we're not going to get any runoff into the water so we can have healthy water while taking care of the soil and putting back into the soil. Um, so a lot of the times we have these big tanks that will hold this until about springtime when it's not raining and it's starting to dry up. Then we'll put it into the ground. Um, so there's no runoff. We won't do it in the winter time when it's snowing, um, just in the spring. Oh, got it. So we're able to see on our cow cam some of that storage for your manure. That's very cool. And that sounds really, really awesome that you guys are working with other environmental experts to help protect the land quality and ultimately the water quality. That's really, really neat. Now, um, I know I have some students in my comment section here asking me to see that big piece of equipment behind you in action. They want to know what it looks like when it's running. So I'm wondering, I think we have some footage we can show of, uh, of a chopper running, which would be very cool. So the plus side is we're able to see too here some of those watersheds we just talked about. Oh, and there's that awesome footage. Now, as a question for you, Chris, is 
do you only grow and harvest corn once a year or is it seasonal? How much, how many times a year can you do that? So we grow corn once a year. Um, we'll plant it in about the end of April. Um, and then, uh, we'll harvest it right now. Now is when we are harvesting it. Um, actually yesterday we were harvesting some and we only do that once a year. So with the grass, we'll harvest that about three times a year. Um, the grass just keeps growing and, uh, we start doing that about May. We'll start harvesting oh. the grass. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, are you ready for some more student questions coming in? Yep. Okay. So here is our next question. Do you raise any bulls here on the farm? So obviously we just saw a bunch of cows. We just talked a lot about all, all those things the cows eat, but do you raise any bulls here on the farm? Um, so yes, we do raise some bulls. Um, we have a beef herd, so we'll raise the bulls up and then we sell meat straight off of the farm to consumers. Um, so people know where their food's coming from. And that's what we use the bulls for is for beef. Okay, got it. So we had some more questions come in, which is, um, what does your milk primarily go to make? So, so does your milk go to be made into fluid milk or into cheese or into butter? So a lot of our milk is sent um, about 15 minutes from the farm um, and it's made into like cheese, butter, and um, like uh, a lot of it's like powdered stuff for like mac and cheese and stuff like oh. that. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So we had another question come in, which is, do what, does what you feed your cows affect how their milk tastes? Um, no, it does not affect how their milk tastes. Um, just the better food you feed them, the higher quality feed you feed them, the more milk they will produce. Got it. So as I understand it too, Chris, uh, it, it might not affect the way it tastes, but it might affect like the components in the milk, right? might affect how yes. much protein or butter fat. Yeah, but not necessarily how it tastes. No. Got it, got it, very cool. Um, so the next question is, how long does a cow live? So, so how old is the oldest cow maybe on this farm? So the oldest cow that we have on this farm is about 14 years old. Got it, got it. Um, is that how long calves or cows usually live or is that pretty old? That's a pretty old cow. I'd say most of our cows lived about 10 or 12 years old. Got it. So we had another question. Is it expensive to care for a cow on the farm or expensive to care for each cow? Um, so it cost us about $2,300 to get a cow from a baby calf up to where she has her first calf at two years old. Got it. Got it. So it's definitely uh, an investment, right? Yes. Okay, Farmer Chris, we got a couple other questions coming in. We're seeing some of your, your land base behind us, and we're seeing some really cool up-close scenes of this chopper. So can you tell us a little bit about the technology that's just in this piece of equipment? Um, is it, you know, it's, it looks obviously very big. It's very expensive. So what are some of the cool technologies that are featured in it? Um, so this machine, we can have it so it'll tell us how much crop is on the field, what our yield is, um, how many tons are coming off an acre. Um, and we are just ordered a new tractor that we haven't got it yet, but it will have all GPS in it. So we won't have to steer it. Well, it'll be all automatic. Oh my gosh, that's really, really cool. So you're definitely moving to adding more technology. Is that something you try and do here on the farm a little bit every year? um as it comes out yeah we're trying to get more and more technology all the time um, it's a big part of the business um the more we use technology the more efficient we be we can become that's really cool uh what is which technology feature on the farm do you like the best which one's your favorite um i like how we can track the cows on our phone um when i'm walking through the barn I could just look at a cow and see how much she's producing um, how long she's laying for how many steps she takes a day um, it's really if I have a cow that I think is getting sick I can look at my phone and see what her activity has, has been um, if she's been laying down more if she's been eating less everything like that oh my gosh so you you, you basically have a full full-time access to any of your cows information that's 
really, really cool. So Chris, we had another question come in. Do you have a favorite cow on the farm? Yes, I do have a favorite cow on the farm. Um, I do have a favorite cow. Can you tell us which cow is it? <laughs> Her number is number five. Um, Very cool. Very cool. Uh, okay, more questions coming your way. So we had another classroom ask us, where do you keep all of the, the young animals or your calves? Are they in a different barn, in a different space? Um, so all the young cows are in another barn. Um, that's where the robot is that feeds them, and we'll be going to that shortly. Okay. So... Next question coming right up here is how much do those calves weigh? Um, so the calves, when they're first born, they weigh about 100 pounds. Um, and then they'll stay on the milk until they're about 200 pounds. We like to double the birth weight and then we start winning them off the milk. Oh, very. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. They grow so fast. Okay. So we had another question, which was, how much uh, milk does the farm produce in a year? And I know, Chris, that might, be, that might be a big math question for you. So if we need to break it down more, we can. So, but how, about how much is the farm making per year? Um, so we do about 3,000 gallons a day. Um, oh, that's that perfect. Out. Yeah, uh, all, my, all my students here can do some multiplication, right? We can do that 3,000 gallons times those 365 days in a year. Um, which ultimately adds up to be quite a bit of milk. Now we had another question come in, which is, do you have any other animals on the farm? Yes, yeah, so we have pigs, sheep, goats, uh, we have chickens, and we do have a couple donkeys. Oh, oh very cool, very cool. Um, now we also had an ask of, are you milking your cows by hand or are you milking them with a machine? Um, so we have a machine that milks them. Um, we attach it to the cows, and when the cow stops producing, it'll trigger something in the machine, and it'll automatically take it off of the cow. Oh, wow. So you've got technology even in the equipment that you're using to milk the cows. Yeah, so it'll tell us how much she produces every day, um, how much she makes the milking, and how long it's on there. And it'll also tell us the temperature of the milk that's coming out of the cow. Got it. Got it. So uh, another individual is asking us, um, how much of your manure do you actually apply to your fields as fertilizer? Is it all of it? Is it some of it? Um, we apply it all to the fields. Everything we make, we apply to the fields as nutrients. Oh, very cool. So it all stays within the farm kind of as a closed system. Yes. That's really neat. Okay, we've got another question coming in, which is where are you storing all that feed that you talked about for the winter right so you were telling us a little bit about we we put it in a pile and we ferment it but where is that do you store it right here on the farm is it in like a bin or a bucket what does that look like for us explain that to us so we keep it in what's called uh, bunker silos it's pretty much a blacktop pad kind of like a parking lot we pile we dump all the feed on there and we drive over it with tractors to push all the oxygen out of it so it won't mold over the winter and then we put an oxygen barrier over top it's like a piece of plastic and we put tires on it so no oxygen can get to the feed um, throughout the winter wow that is super cool we're seeing some awesome footage of that right now now um when you guys put that feed in uh obviously it's, it's fresh and it's wet and it's fluffy. And you showed us what the end product looks like. Um, as far as the size of that feed, does it actually shrink and compact down as you ferment it? Or do you lose any nutrient quality? Um, no, it doesn't really get packed down anymore. Um, it's pretty much the same size as when we put it in. Wow, that's really neat. Um, now we're seeing too on, on our end of things, we're actually able to see that what it looks like old tires are being used on top to hold that plastic down. Um, that's kind of a cool use for recycling. Do you guys use those? 
Yes, we do. So a lot of the tires we use come right off the farm. If we wear them out or they blow apart, we'll use them on the bunk. Um, it's kind of like recycling and uh, it's a good use for them. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, we had another question come in. Um, oh, we had another. How? Oh, my goodness. This is a very interesting question from one of our students, which is how much is the farm worth? And, and I'll, I'll preface that like Chris was saying you don't have to answer that directly, but maybe give us an idea. How much does one acre of land usually cost in this area? Um, so in this area, an average acre costs about $2,000 to $2,500. Wow, very cool. All right, Chris, we are wrapping up on our time here. I know we had, uh, maybe we were talking about going over to see the calves, but this tour is specifically our environmental and sustainability deep dive. If you would like to see the calves here at the farm, you can join our next tour, which is at uh, 1230 today in just a short hour and a half. So I'm gonna leave it open to my students. If there's any other questions we wanna ask farmer Chris, or Chris, if you have anything else you wanted to share with us, any other cool fun facts or anything our students should check out or maybe where they can find more information about your farm. Um, so we're on Facebook, we have an Instagram. Um, you can find us on Facebook or Instagram. We're always posting pictures and letting everybody know what's going on in the farm day to day, um, explaining. And we have a lot of cool videos on there on what we're doing all the time. Oh, awesome. So our students can definitely follow along with the rest of your year. That is so cool. Well, I'm just double checking our questions and it looks like we have, uh, we've wrapped up and we're going to go ahead and let our students go for the day. So before I let you all go though, I definitely wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for joining our tour today. You're going to see some questions that pop up on your screen. Those questions are for you to answer to tell us what you liked about the tour, what you thought was great, uh, maybe what we can do better for you next year. We always want to be improving and help our farmers improve as well. So be sure to answer our poll questions. Other than that, don't forget, you can join our tour at 1230 today for more awesome uh, footage here from Albano Farms, or you can join one of our other upcoming virtual farm tours because we have two more on different farms coming up on October 14th and November 21st. So be sure to head back to our website to check out our next live virtual farm tour. But until then, you guys be sure to check out Albano's on Facebook or Instagram and follow along with their story. But thanks so much for joining us today.